He mentioned a little bit about kendo, didn't he? Swinging a bamboo sword in kendo and swinging these real katana are completely different techniques. But taking a look at the video here, the katana that he's holding onto right now doesn't look like it's made in the traditional katana style. And as for the katana, the reverse grip, yes, it does have a lot of benefits. And welcome to Last Ask Shogo. So you guys might know about my new channel, Last Ask Six Sensei, where I uh, collaborate with Asamu Shinryu and the headmaster Six Sensei to make a lot of videos about Kobudo, the ancient martial arts in Japan. However, in the comments, I actually have a lot of people telling me, oh, the reverse grip has actual meanings to it kind of thing. And I was asking my friends where this reverse grip is useless idea comes from. And then they told me there's an amazing channel called Cell Sword Arts, and it seems they talk a lot about the katana too so today i thought i'd like to take a look at their shorts and react to them however one thing that you do need to understand um, before watching this video is that i have zero zero experience and knowledge about the long swords or like european weapons it seems he talks a lot about the european weapons too but i have no knowledge and experience in it so i only know about the katanas so i hope you understand that in this channel you can take a closer look at japanese culture tips on travel in kyoto and social problems in japan so learners and lovers of japanese culture be sure to subscribe to enjoy more content so then let's get started this steel was folded a thousand times to make it strong it really katana for long your sword steel was found in a bog the long sword is the height of technology. <laughs> They're gonna fight each other. <laughs> They're wearing tank tops. <laughs> ah, the reverse grip guy. Well, I'm pretty sure they know about this already and they're probably making fun of it, but as I explained before in my previous videos, no, the katana is not folded over a thousand times. The katana is only usually folded around 10 to 20 times. And the thousand, the number is the layers of the katana. And the sword action that they're doing, they're probably doing it on purpose as well, but you wouldn't clash the katana that much. You'll probably damage it a lot. I think the long sword would probably be stronger than the katana if you fight it like this. I think the katana will be heavily damaged and the long sword would probably last longer, wouldn't it? But the last part where he actually put his hand on the sword to try to push back, that is a movement they actually do in a lot of the kata and the yai techniques that I, for example, I, I traded. So for example, you would draw the katana out like this and then you would cut the opponent by pressing down on the sword, on the rim of the sword like this and stab after that, for example. And already at the end there, there was the guy with the reverse grip. And because they hate that guy, they're probably gonna be going and attacking him together, right? That reverse grip did look really, really weird. And also, as I explained before in my uh, videos too, katana versus longsword, it, it's really uh, a debate that doesn't have an answer. It depends on the situation, what kind of armor you're wearing, the level of that person, the level of each sword, and so on and so forth. So it's impossible to, you know, generalize completely the katana and the longsword and see, say which one is stronger. They both grew up in different environments to suit different types of fighting, different types of battles. So they are both strong in where I grew up in. Some people advocate using oh, the there we go, the reverse grip in an offhanded parry move. Oh, this is part that four. That makes no sense. Reverse grip is only good for close quarters combat when I cannot stab um. forward if I was grappling him or something and I had to hook. That's fine here. But okay. it's not fine when my whole thing is reach and distance. That's what a rapier is for. I want him to be far away from me. Now, this is no longer an effective parrying weapon. It's a liability. Any parry that I take, I'm leaving my hand exposed. The cross guard is designed to funnel an attack down this into the cross guard. But in this okay. position, the first thing you see is my knuckles. I can cant it this way so that it slides down into here, but that's an awkward hand position, and it's weird and hard to do. Why wouldn't you just do this? There's no advantage to this. If you're talking about hooking a blade, he thrusts the knee, that's weird. And I've just hit my hand on the cross guard like this. Whereas okay, if he does okay. that here, boom, super easy. Just turn it down. Just use it normally. Just use it normally. <laughs> just use it normally. I think there was probably part one, part two, part three, but part four was probably the most popular one. And in this part four though, he doesn't talk about the katana, he's talking about European swords probably. And as for the katana, the reverse grip, yes, it does have a lot of benefits. Now as he explains though, it is not beneficial in a fight where you have a very long distance away from your enemy and you're suddenly holding onto a long katana, reverse grip, no, absolutely a bad idea. 
When it does come in handy though, as I explained in a video I made together with Six Sensei. Often cases, number one is when you're really, really close to your opponent. And the situation is completely different because you have your katana in your sheath and it starts from drawing the katana out of the scabbard. A reverse grip can actually allow you to draw even if you're really, really close to the opponent. And number two, if you're going to be using a short katana like the Tanto, the reverse grip will be very, very beneficial too. So I'm pretty sure, um, as he's explaining here, um, if you have like the sword drawn out already, if you're going to be holding on to it, no, it's, that's definitely not useful. But the reverse grip for the katana though, because katana, the fighting style, starts from drawing the katana out of the scabbard, there are a lot of benefits. Not just in Asayama Ichijinu, like in the Yushinju that I trained in too. Like for example, there are kata where it starts from drawing the katana with a reverse hand, and using it this way to block a leg attack, for example, using it the side of the sword, and then flipping it over to cut him. So it all starts from drawing the scabbard out of the sheath. Otherwise, there's absolutely no benefit of trying to reverse grip a long katana. People in our comments are always telling Ooh, us that the katana, katana is much sword. faster and more nimble than the long sword. But here's faster. the thing. You're wrong. The katana and the long sword both okay. weigh about the same, between 2.4 and 3 pounds. But the katana okay. is significantly shorter than the long sword. And that's all in the blade. Mm. Katana also has a much more forward center of gravity than the long sword, which is closer to the hilt. This is intentional because the katana is primarily a cutting weapon. That forward weight allows it to be better in the cut along with its okay. curved shape. The long sword is a cut and thrust weapon. While not as efficient as the katana at the cut, its double-sided nature means that it has more options in combat, and its long tapered point means it's much more efficient at thrusting. Absolutely. With the further back weight, double edges, and longer point, the long sword is faster and more maneuverable than the katana. This isn't to say okay. that either is better than the other. They're very similar in fact, but the differences in their design and intended use mean that they operate slightly differently. Now again, I need to say that I do not know anything about the long sword, so I can't comment so much about what he's saying in the video. But I do want to say, first of all, he was talking about the length of the katana. I am very sure that in general, if you pick up the general length of the katana long sword, yes, a long sword should be longer. It's a long sword. But the katana, of course, have different lengths, and there are very, very long katana, like the katana I have over here is an old with this three shaku long. This is also katana, but they're very, very long. So it does depend on the type of katana. Also, number two, he was talking about where the center of gravity of the katana is. But that also depends on each katana, because they are all handmade. There are katana that has more of the center of gravity towards the tip, more towards the handle. It really depends on the quality of that sword. And please, Please do correct me if I'm wrong. If you're a fan of cell sword arts, please correct me. But taking a look at the video here, the katana that he's holding onto right now doesn't look like it's made in the traditional katana style. The tsuba is a round metal fitting. The handle doesn't look like it has a tsukamaki, the strings here. And also the fuchi and kashira doesn't look like the traditional katana either. And the reason why I'm pointing this out is because depending on the size and the shape and everything of the metal fittings, the center of gravity will obviously change. So if you really want to test where the center of gravity of a katana is, you really need to have the traditional kinds of metal fittings and the decorations and the wrappings and such in order to check that because it changes it a lot. And again, I don't know about the long sword, but for the katana too, yes, if the center of gravity is closer to the handle, it does mean that it is easier to handle. If you're, for example, going to be doing tamishiri, the mat cutting and such, if you want to choose a katana that's easier for it to handle, you should choose one that has center of gravity closer to the handle, absolutely. And the thing that he pointed out about the thrusting, the katana is absolutely not the best weapon for thrusting at all because it is curved. Again, it's stronger for the cutting, and of course there are thrusting techniques in katana too, but compared to straight swords, it's absolutely not as strong. Whenever we do a sword video, we get people Ooh, another in the katana versus telling me long that, term. well, you're only using a European style sword, a katana can make that move work. And here's the thing, oh, there's a lot of people who these are fans two swords of katana. fight almost exactly the same. Really? Of course there's some differences. This is a double bladed weapon. It is a balance between cut and thrust. While this is a single bladed weapon, it more heavily focuses on the cut, but it can thrust. Yes, but the yes, principle yes. of this weapon is the same. It is a leverage based um. weapon. And what I mean is both of them have an elongated handle mm -hmm. and they employ a push and pull motion to create force. Okay. If you train in long sword, you can pick up one of these and functionally do all the moves you can do with really? this. Really? Same thing, if you train oh, kendo or some other katana-based martial art, you can pick up this and okay. fight effectively with it. 
because we're all constrained by the same biomechanical functions and we created the same weapons all throughout history. Uh -huh, it's a uh -huh. really cool effect. Watch Kendo right alongside Hema and you'll see what I'm talking about. These are very similar. One thing does concern me a little bit. He mentioned a little bit about kendo, didn't he? Swinging a bamboo sword in kendo and swinging these real katana are completely different techniques. Because a shinai, the bamboo swords that you use in kendo for competitions, are completely straight, they don't, they're not curved, they're much lighter, and the way you swing them are completely different. The katana-related martial arts like iai, kenjutsu, and such, the purpose is to cut through something. But in kendo, it is to bounce your sword back and hit something. Cutting through something and hitting something are completely different. So if you take a look at videos of people, for example, doing the basic suburi, just the swinging, kendo and iai look completely different, right? I don't know, maybe the, the long sword, you do actually handle it like you do in kendo. You like hit and bring the sword back kind of thing. But if you're really talking about actually cutting something with these katana, the kendo techniques and ei kenjutsu techniques are very, very different. So that is one thing that I did want to point out. Another myth we hear about- <laughs> Another katana, katana versus long sword. Long Everyone this loves this question. That the katana is made for unarmored combat, but the long sword is made to deal with opponents in armor. But huh. here's the thing, you're wrong again. And here's okay. why. Neither of these swords are good against armor. In oh, fact, okay. no sword is good against an armored opponent. Okay, That's okay. because armor cannot be cut through with a sword. That's purely fantasy. Mm. Um, there are techniques you can use with a long sword, and I guess with the katana too. Uh, there's more depictions of it with long sword, where you will do things like half sorting, reinforcing the tip, using the back as a bludgeon, mm, and all kinds really? of other stuff, use it that way too? degenerating into wrestling. But Interesting. swords do not work against armor. Uh, that's what armor is for. The things that are more effective against armor are things like halberds and war picks oh, and man. hammers. So no, not good for armor. One thing I do want to say though, as he was uh, mentioning, that there are some techniques that Longsword could fight against the armor, although it's not the best weapon, right? And he said that there's absolutely more depictions about it. I'm very confident, because I'm training in Kobudo right now, that there's the same amount of ways of fighting against someone with armor on with the katana too. Like, take a look at Six Sensei demonstrating some of the kata that are meant to be fighting against someone who is wearing armor. Especially in this case, this armor I'm talking about right now is the samurai armor. The samurai armor, although it looks very heavy, and it actually is heavy, like 25 to through about 30 kilo, there are actually a lot of openings on the wrists, for example, on the armpits and the legs. And that's because it needs to be flexible for the samurai wearing armor to be able to use bows and arrows as their primary weapons. So there were actually a lot of techniques to fight against armored samurai with a katana too. However, as he explained, he was completely correct. Is it effective? Is it the best way to fight against a person with the armor on? Absolutely no. It's your very last option to fight against someone with a katana. It would be much better, of course, to use bows and arrows, maybe firearms like the Tanegashima, for example, or maybe spears will be able to pierce through some of the open spaces. So you could fight with a katana, but would it be like the first weapon that you should bring out to fight with someone with samurai armor on? No, absolutely no. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. It was very, very interesting listening to his stories. Again, especially because I don't know anything about the long sword. I'm sure that uh, people who train with European swords in Japan are very, very rare. I mean, we do have, of course, sports fencing and such, but any other weapon like the long sword or cream wars or, you know, halberds and stuff like that would be really, really rare. I've never heard of any Japanese person doing it. I really hope that in the future, there will be some people who are experienced in both, like for example, Hima and Kobudo martial arts in Japan, who have knowledge in both fields. Because I feel there's a lot of misunderstanding on both sides. I don't know too much about European weapons, and not too many Japanese people have been sending out information about traditional Budo martial arts enough to the world for everyone to learn. And so I really hope that the Last Ask Six NC channel and the activities I'll be doing together with Asami Shindu will be useful and helpful for more people. And by the way, speaking of Asami Shindu, we have recently started online lessons actually. So if you're interested in learning Kobudo, Japanese Budo martial arts from the Grandmaster Six Sensei, please take a look at the description box in this video. And I'll see you in the next one, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Nasan domo, arigatou gozaimashita.